One of the things that's terribly important for dogs, and this is as true for dogs as it is for children, is consistency. Now, Aquila knows coming down Duffins Creek that she has specific spots to cross the creek, um, specific routines with regards to fetching and retrieving. And she also knows that in working with me, she's going to get consistent commands. So the first command, of course, is drop. And we'll see how this works today. Aquila, drop. That works perfectly. So in this particular spot, she's going to go completely across the creek and either up the side of the riverbed, in which case she does. Now she will proceed to her favorite crossing point, which is uh, quite a ways down. But she knows specifically where the rocks are not too bad. And we will try this again. Drop. Ready? So she'll go at the same spot on the riverbank. Find her stick and head down right to her favorite crossing point. So this is in effect a natural obstacle course. And I think it reinforces the dog's ego that she's capable of doing this every time. Way to go, monster. Are you going to drop? Come on, drop. Drop. Akila, drop. Good girl. And we'll do it three times just for reinforcement. Same spot on the bank. Finds the stick and heads down to her favorite crossing point. So she's already internalized the routine. She trusts her own skill level. She knows the environmental conditions and develops a lot of satisfaction at being able to complete the task on her terms. Pardon the finger. Way to go, Akira. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Are you going to drop? All right, we'll go to the next spot, okay? This portion of the creek you can see is uh, quite deep and this is also one of her spots where she will sit patiently dropping the stick to indicate that she wants to uh, retrieve it here. But in this case, instead of going up the creek bank, she'll fetch in deep water and bring it back in deep water. And this is her routine at this part. Again, she knows the conditions of the water. She prefers it colder as opposed to warmer. And today I would guess the river temperature is approximately 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. And there's been a lot of rain recently. And she actually expects the uh, stick to be thrown the same way every time. So this isn't a terribly challenging exercise for her, but again, it's part of her daily routine and she knows that it's one of her spots. And at this point, given that she's almost six years old, we don't have to even exchange commands for the routine to keep going. Although her command to me is dropping the stick and waiting for me to throw it. Come on, little girl. I believe in positive reinforcement, so you'll hear that a lot. You won't hear any negativities because the dog is always good intentioned. She knows that uh, this is part of the daily routine. She wants to please and perform as best she can. So there's absolutely no need to talk harshly or in a negative tone. 
This is also true of children. Come on, monster. Good girl. This is the spot in Duffins Creek where Aquila gets to combine most of her swimming skills. A uh, combination of deep water, shallow water, steep banks on the cliff, and adhering to voice commands. Go! Not to mention enjoying virtual free fall. Come on, Aquila! Now, you'll notice that my voice commands are short and repetitive, focusing on words that she has learned over the past five, six years. And I don't vary from these words. And she also won't vary from the routine of this obstacle uh, course, but it does require some thinking on her part because I'm not going to throw it in the same spot all the time. Now she will see if it's going to come to her, and when she decides it's not, she'll go get it. Come on, monster! Yesterday when we were up, we did 30 repetitions with a 20-pound log, so today we're kind of slacking it uh, with a stick that weighs less than a pound. But for Akela, it's the uh, completion of the repetition that counts. And again, as part of the repetition, she'll do what I refer to as a victory lap. And her signifying that it's ready to be thrown again is her dropping the stick. Good girl. Good girl. Go. Monster. And you'll note that she really enjoys throwing herself into the water, whether it's jumping off a uh, one meter high uh, cliff into water that she knows, or throwing herself into the, hey dog, throwing herself into the uh, creek. So I'll pick up on this in a bit. Hi folks. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how relatively easy it is to have your dog learn proper fetching and retrieving techniques while at the same time providing a, a natural obstacle course for the dog and a lot of verbal and uh, environmental stimulation. I'm a reader of Caesar Milan, but I don't necessarily subscribe to his dominance theory of uh, canine management. So my Dogs and humans evolve symbiotically, so it's natural that the working relationship between dogs and humans is far more cooperative than it is based on dominance uh, of one individual over the other. Um, dogs work far more effectively uh, when they perceive their human as a team member, and in this case, the Labrador. familiar with her uh, play regions and she will send me signals that uh, tell me when she wants to either have the stick thrown for her, to play tug of war, or any other activity. And when she's not sure of what I'm going to be doing, she will look back, make eye contact, seek confirmation of what we're doing together as a team. Verbal commands that I've developed with the lab, whose name is Aquila, over the past five and a half years are based on simple concepts, one word, two word commands. Now I know a number of trainers will try to teach you that uh, use of whistles, multiple whistle signals or multiple clicker signals is the way to go. Um, because I think dog education and teamwork training is an interpersonal skill, both on the part of the person and the dog, um, and that the dog responds to his or her owner's voice, I've always preferred to uh, opt for uh, verbal commands. Again, one or two word commands, but sometimes more sophisticatedly, uh, complete sentences where there is a definitive subject, 
object and bird. What I've observed over the past five years is that the dog understands action commands, nouns, conceptualizing objects, uh, verbs necessarily are abstract because the person, whether it be a dog or a human, is translating the sound symbol into a conception of action. And no matter how you look at it, whether it's a person or a human or a dog, that is extremely sophisticated thinking. And I don't think it's a matter of uh, operant conditioning where, like a Pavlovian dog, you say the word or ring the dinner bell and suddenly the dog salivates on command. This dog is understanding the concept. She is reflecting it back to me constantly. Akila is now using a new stick. She retrieved that stick after I asked her to find a new stick when we lost the old stick. Because she understands that complete sentence, Akila, find a new stick, that's the first thing she goes for. And she's quite aware that what's an acceptable new stick is something that is big enough and substantive enough that she won't lose track of it when it goes into the water. you also note that she's got a sophisticated understanding of water currents and angles so that she can conceptualize in advance where the stick's going to be and where she's going to be when either the stick or herself enter the water. What I also find amazing about this dog is that she never goes for the easy out. She'll take the longest route through the water and rather than climb up a shallow angle bank, she'll try to climb practically a vertical cliff. And because she's so routinized, after she does her victory lap, she's going to put the stick down in exactly the place she uses to signify that it's time to do it again. Good girl. Which is that place. So again, this is a form of interactive communication. Go. Good girl. Come on, monster. Let's go. Now, did you notice she looked right back at me for directions? Today's uh, current is not as strong as yesterday's, so she's actually able to make headway in it. Vertical. Her shoulder muscles are extremely well developed. Now, I'm sure she could make use of a uh, obstacle course uh, in a competitive environment if I wanted to. I'm also quite sure that I could uh, train her as a hunting dog because nothing would please her more than going after a dead duck. Drop the stick, drop the stick. I don't think she'd eat it before she brought it back either. Go on, monster. Now notice that she's watching the stick, seeing if it's going to come close to the bank, and judging her entry. And this is the important point. She's making judgments as she goes along, based upon her knowledge of the environment, knowledge of what the task is, and complete confidence in her own ability, which includes sailing through the air. My little girl! Because this is all relationship based, her understanding of the completion of the activity depends on where she knows me to be, where we can begin the activity all over again. Drop! Drop! Good girl. 
Now I usually use the one word command drop but she's perfectly fine with drop the stick as well. Come on little girl, let's go! Again she looked back to receive direction from me. Little guy's trying to decide which part of the uh, creek to uh, come across. He's 13 and he's not as well uh, developed uh, training wise or game wise as Aquila the Lab is, which is fine. I'm, a, I'm certainly at a different stage of my understanding of uh, dog psychology than I was when I got him, Coco, the little guy, in 1998. Come on, monster. Good girl, good girl. Drop. There you go. One more time. Go. Go. Go get the stick. Which she will, but now she figures it's close enough to the bank that she can try to pull it out without uh, getting wet. That might work for her. It might not. I don't think it's going to work for her. We shall see. Come on, Akila, Jump! I much prefer the natural obstacle course to uh, any artificial course. Um, another point I want to make is that because of the prevalence of orthopedic in in injuries with dogs, uh, especially Labrador Retrievers, I think it's great to have her running on terrain that will provide as much uh, <clears throat> padding for her legs and joints as possible. The ground is actually very soft. And obviously the water is even softer than that. The advantage of swimming, of course, is that it's uh, practically zero impact uh, exercise and is really great at strengthening the muscles, tendons, and ligaments that surround a joint. And if you look closely at this dog, I keep uh, her extremely thin for a lab. Anyway, drop. Good girl. And I've paid particular attention to uh, muscle development, which is part of what today's uh, routine is about. Let's go! Come on, monster, let's go! Now she's very focused, which is uh, a characteristic of the uh, Labrador Retriever breed. The only thing that would defocus her in this activity is finding a dead fish. Labs, of course, are voracious uh, eaters, even more so than most dogs. And this one has a particular fondness for really rancid, rotten meat. Dead fish that are six months old or so. Are you ready? Okay, go. Anyway, we'll move on to the next stop. Come on, little girl. Good dog. Good dog. All right, folks, talk to you in a bit. Now, a note about harnesses. Hang on. Coco's about to tip over the camera. Pardon the wobbly camera. You'll notice that both of these dogs are wearing harnesses in addition to uh, in Coco's case, one neck collar, and in Akila's case, two. Akila does wear a choke chain, but I only wear that, or I only use that when we're at a store where it's absolutely important that she not be able to wriggle out of a harness. For the most part, the harness that Akila is wearing, go. She never tries to wriggle out of because she knows that uh, part of its function is to assist with rollerblading. But what it also does is creates a, a, a walking experience, to use that phrase, for the dog that doesn't involve uh, pain. Choke chains, by their very nature, involve pain. These uh, Uber choke chains that have little spikes on them that if you tighten them, uh, at the neck causes even more pain or can possibly puncture their necks is nothing but cruelty in my opinion and we're hopefully going to see a dog park 
drop in a few minutes. And my opinion on dog parts is that if you're an owner that is not confident walking your dog and you want the dog to be in a fenced-in environment where you don't want to do any walking yourself, dog parks are certainly better than nothing. Um, a walk has to, by its very nature, provide cardiovascular fitness activities for the dog. And cardiovascular fitness is as important for the dog as it is for uh, the human being. Also, a walk will provide an awful lot more stimulation than just finding um, a dog park that is just an enlarged version of, uh, say, a back yard goat or even an apartment uh, building. Uh, again, it's better than nothing, but in my opinion, it's not much better than nothing. A dog park will give the dog an opportunity to socialize with other dogs and with other people, which is incredibly important since dogs live in a, a human environment. But Caesar Milan is right in this respect. The number one bonding experience for dog and human takes place on the walk because it is the analog of how drop, 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 good girl, go. It is the analog of how humans and dogs first worked together when they got together, in my opinion, hundreds of thousands of years ago. That is coordinating, collaborating on the hunt. So it's only natural that all of the games and activities that dogs try to um, make for themselves while they're on the walk resemble the hunt. In this case, in the lad's case, fetching and retrieving. And, oh, pardon the shaky lens. In the Lassapoo's case, being the alarm dog and keeping me appraised of anything uh, that's a potential threat in the surroundings. But he's 13, so he gets defocused very, very uh, easily. The lab, as you can see, is absolutely focused on the activity at hand, even when I'm talking to the camera. So, the benefits of five years of intense training. I'm now going to give you a better view of this location. And again, it's a location that we've been using for about three years. The water is very deep. This is uh, also beaver territory. But in the lab's case, uh, it's an opportunity to swim in water that uh, is considerably over her head, even when she's making attempts to avoid getting in the water. But it's the same routine. She'll parade around, and if she wants to keep going, she'll drop it right at my feet, which is exactly what she wants to do. So I'll put it out a little further this time, and uh, with a little luck, she'll jump into the water. There we go. Come on, monster! And again, because she knows uh, all of the area uh, around here, she knows that the uh, bottom conditions on this portion of the creek are mostly sand, and it's perfectly fine to her to parade around, despite the fact that some idiots like to break uh, beer bottles and toss them into the creek. Note about dirt, old English saying, if you're not getting dirty, you're not having fun. People who worry about getting their dogs dirty, I can appreciate don't want their houses dirty, but uh, a dog scrounging around in uh, her or his natural environment is going to get dirty, try to prevent it, and you're really stopping your dog from having all the fun in the world. Especially if that dog's going to get wet. How many Labrador Retriever owners do you see who never allow their dogs to get wet? Um, provide them with very little by way of uh, intense cardiovascular uh, exercise. And consequently the labs are as obese as hell. Contributing to the statistical uh, maximum age for the lab between 10 and 12 years. Which is utter rot. This little guy is 13 years of age. He's nimble, he's fast, and he's flexible because he's thin and he gets 
probably proportionally more cardiovascular exercise than the lab, simply because he's that much smaller and he's covering the same distance. As a vet once told me, you can never have a too thin dog. So, structuring the dog's feeding is also incredibly beneficial. If you're overfeeding your dog, you're not doing it for the dog's benefit, you're doing it for your own benefit. Whether they're feelings of guilt or the fact that the dog is manipulating you. Uh, again, where Caesar Milan is right is that uh, I won't say you have to be the pack leader, but you have to be very familiar with structure. Again, be it dog or human child and be able to apply that structure consistently. I think that speaks to how sophisticated dogs are, that they require that level of consistent structuring that a human child would. And the proof is right there. This is also one of the lab's favorite uh, swimming spots. It's another bend in the uh, creek where the water flow has carved out um, a quite deep uh, portion right over there. The center of that log right there is a beaver lodge. Fortunately the beavers don't uh, come out this time of day so uh, again fortunately uh, the lab is not uh, hindered in her fetching routine. Which is a good thing since beavers have got wickedly sharp teeth and would probably chew the crap out of uh, the lab's limbs. It's an obstacle course like all of the other uh, areas and the lab has no end of fun climbing over all the logs and the uh, uh, river banks. And she always knows where I am and uh, completes the uh, rep repetition by dropping the stick right at my feet. Come on little girl. There's a good dog. Come on back here. And drop. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Wait. Alright, you don't want to wait. This is one of Akilah's favorite spots. It gives her a nice oval root to grab her stick. Lots of obstacles, lots of chances for uh, quick thinking on her part. One of the advantages of uh, this route is that you can throw the stick wherever you want and uh, not get into so much of a routine that she doesn't have to think her way through. And that brings me to another point. You know, and this is where I disagree with Caesar Milan. S drop the stick, Akila. Drop. Akila, drop. Caesar uh, says that uh, all you have to do is walk your dog three times a week for 45 minutes each and then the rest of the time it's okay to leave your dog all by him or herself uh, in a house. I disagree. Uh, dogs again like human children require a tremendous amount of stimulation. If you were to lock a child in an environment that provided no stimulation and no human interaction or social interaction with uh, other same species creatures, you know, other dogs, uh, that dog would soon start exhibiting or that child would soon start exhibiting, drop the stick, signs of neuroses, catatonia, and extremely dysfunctional behavior. Go! Which of course dogs do, whether it's overeating, destroying the environment they find themselves in, in other words making their own stimulation. Dogs react in exactly the same way human beings do. So I respectfully disagree with uh, Mr. Milan. This lab has had five and a half years of three hour walks per day, 365 days of the year, in the Canadian environment, which means four distinct seasons. She's usually swimming in all four seasons. 
and uh, I, I think the results speak for themselves. Go! Come on, monster! Good girl! Good girl! Now we're about to go to the uh, next stop. Then we'll be crossing the creek and heading our heading uh, up to the Grand Valley Dog Park. Well, actually, she wants to go again. Drop the stick! Drop the stick! Aquila, drop! Drop! Note the monotone. Go! Except when I use a command. Hurry up, little girl! She'll sometimes lose track of the stick simply because the stick, from her eye's point of view, is virtually the same color as the water. It's down that way. It's in there. Oh, you might have to go find a new stick. No, you don't. It's right there. She doesn't lose the stick often, but occasionally she will, and then the command is, go find a new stick. Which again, from a grammatical point of view, is a pretty sophisticated concept. This is actually going to be the last stop before we head over to the uh, dog park. We're not going to be going in the dog park because, quite honestly, that was would be the last possible place I would want to uh, have either of my dogs. Um, they get plenty of opportunity to socialize with other dogs down here when they're uh, off leash in a natural environment. Um, the lab is, as you can see, totally predisposed to moving while I'm moving. And if I don't move, she'll eventually become catatonic herself. You should also realize that the intense activity of these walks for uh, Aquila, the lab, is predicated on her absolute confidence in me as a partner. She knows that if she gets into trouble, I'm going in the water after her. She knows that I'm going to spend more time worrying about what her activities are than me constantly tugging on the leash, which is why she doesn't wear a leash. Even the little guy, Coco, is going to uh, be allowed to sniff and be a dog for most of the walks. And here's an example of the determination of the lab, uh, that even though the current is rather fast moving, she's going to continue until she gets her stick. Come on, little girl! Come on, dog! Never hurts to have a little bit of encouragement. I do worry at the uh, harness catching itself in things underwater, and it was actually just over uh, pretty much where she is right now, about two years ago, that she ran into a, a very sharp uh, a tree stub that a beaver had left, and it impaled her in the ribs, leaving about a seven or eight centimeter long gash that could have easily punctured her lungs. But, you know, you let dogs be dogs, much like you let kids be kids, and if they get dirty or they get scratched and scraped, you move on and you don't make too big a deal about it. This dog never blanched once, and you know, if she would sit long enough, I'd show you the scar. But there was never a complaint about uh, being uh, punctured in the ribs. Anyway, I'll uh, come back when we get to the dog park. Right, we're on the uh, opposite side of Duffins Creek now. Go! 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 And we're about, uh, I'd say, 500 meters away from the dog park. This is also an area that Aquila knows quite well. Um, yo, yo, no, no, no. But we haven't been up here, uh, this part, for about two months. Right there! And that's part of the teamwork you just heard, because she knows the phrase right there indicates exactly where her stick is. She'll occasionally look back to uh, see if I'm guiding her. 
she responds more to uh, movement cues than actual verbal cues without movement. But she does make use of both of them. Go! Good girl! Come on, sweetheart! But again, that's the benefit of uh, five and a half years of consistent training, that she knows that we're working together as a team to retrieve the stick, even though she's responsible for most of it. And it really is an example where both mind and body is uh, being uh, worked um, for three hours a day. Go, go. And for this level of uh, stimulation, what you've got is a very focused, very calm, very intelligent dog. Perfect for therapy because, you know, if, if you exercise the dog to this extent before you introduce the dog to a therapeutic environment where she's meeting people for the first time. Drop, drop, drop the stick. Go! She's going to be very calm and receptive to people, which is precisely what you want, because uh, the dog is going to respond to the needs of the uh, people she's interacting with, particularly in the lab's case, uh, children. And if you've played her out, she isn't going to necessarily want to engage in rambunctious play when she's uh, in a social situation with people whom she doesn't know. And that's one of the true tests of a therapeutic dog drop, that uh, she will react calmly to people she doesn't know. And uh, it's over there. If you'll look at the degree she's... Uh, nope, back! Right there! Now you're off course, little girl. Now, it's not an exact science having her respond to verbal cues. Right there! No, back! Back! No, Akila! Back! No, yep! Right there! It's not an exact science, but it works nine times out of ten. So the dog's very empathic and she knows uh, the people who are dog people who are uh, going to be responsive to uh, her and uh, people to stay away from. Mostly, and thankfully, people respond to Labrador Retrievers like no other dog. Um, and I have to think it's uh, mostly because labs look so kind and beautiful, which is an anthropomorphism, of course, but that's what humans do with non-human, quote-unquote, animals. In my opinion, of course, dogs are people. As an aside, there uh, is a concept in legal professions and animal rights uh, activists called uh, non-human persons having dogs and other higher level mammals like apes, monkeys, dolphins declared non-human people so that they can be given rights under the law. Come on little girl! Hi there! And here's an example of a lab overweight, young uh, with those spiky collars on them. Hi! Entirely up to him. Go! Come on, monster! Well, at least the lady's dressed the same color as her dog. But that dog is less than a year old. She's obese. She's wearing three types of collars, I'll give her that, but. One collar is a choke chain, and the other is one of those spiky 
chains and if you noticed while the dog was off the leash or at least not having the leash in the uh, human's hands the dog was going about uh, her merry business don't let your dogs get fat anyway next uh, stop is the dog park and here we have the Grand Valley Park dog park Grand Valley Park's been here for you know, 60, 70 years in various forms. When the uh, Garbage Mountain was in full flower, it was a landfill site 20 odd years ago. This park was just bush, but recently they reopened it to people. Uh, the smell of methane from the uh, festering garbage doesn't come down here very often. It's a really nice, large, open piece of land. But as you can see, uh, the owners aren't doing a, an awful lot of uh, moving around. And because the humans telegraph their playfulness or lack of playfulness to their dogs, uh, lack of movement on the humans' parts usually translates to lack of movement on the dogs' parts. They might be uh, out uh, in the great outdoors off a leash, but... Uh, Catatonia tends to rule, except the Rotti over there, who seems to be intent on playing with the kids, which is a good thing. We have a little dog who's a little bit more curious than others, coming over to see what's what. Now, we're not playing anymore. Playtime's over. The uh, other part... Hey, dog! The other part of uh, the Grand Valley Dog Park is uh, an off-leash area at the uh, top of the uh, hill here which to me is even more useless than uh, this larger place uh, down at the bottom of the hill. You know, you've got maybe um, a 10 meter by 25 meter enclosure. Uh, great for humans who have very little confidence putting their dogs on a leash. Are you going to drop a killer or no? Off topic, uh, pardon the shaky camera, one of the things the uh, lab does uh, to indicate preference of activity, when she wants to play tug of war, she will come to my right side, hold the uh, stick firmly in her teeth, and uh, <laughs> stare at me until I play tug of war with her. I also don't object to her jumping up on me uh, very often, um, because... I think it's uh, Anne Horowitz, uh, the uh, dog behaviorist, has uh, noted that uh, domesticated dogs want to make eye contact with their humans. And I know I used the word owner a while ago. It's something that I want to get away from, not because I'm being fashionable, um, but canine companion or even human companion tends to more accurately reflect the relationship between dog and human. Uh, but again, getting back to the idea of a non-human person, unfortunately in our society, dogs are considered property, which is why there are such horrendous abuses of dogs in our society. And here we are at the enclosed area uh, at the top of the uh, Seton Trail. Um, one thing worth noting, of course, is that uh, technically all of the off-leash activities that I've been doing with the dogs today is uh, illegal, contrary to Town of Pickering bylaws, which I guess is understandable, although no cop I have ever seen uh, or responsible public official has ever told me to put my dogs on a leash because they've seen how well the dogs behave off a leash. Um, the next part, and this will be the uh, end part before I come back on camera and uh, uh, do a conclusion, is uh, on leash behavior because uh, while I th would much prefer to have the dogs off leash running at their own pace and enjoying themselves being dogs, the simple reality is that dogs live in a human environment and for their own safety 
they have to be controlled while in that human environment, particularly cars. Uh, so I don't expect a lot of my dogs when they're on a leash. I certainly don't expect them to heal at my hips all the way down, but I do expect them to obey simple commands. Uh, and where I do agree with Caesar Milan is that the human on an on-leash situation has to be calm and assertive. I think you are lost if you are not. So next up is my very limited but very effective on-leash behavior for my dogs. I just uh, finished, uh, I think her name is Ann Horowitz's uh, recent book, Inside of a Dog. One of the points she makes is that uh, when humans take their dogs for a walk, invariably the dog is forced to uh, uh, go at a human pace rather than being allowed to be a dog and sniffing, interrogating the environment, gaining knowledge from the environment, which is what these guys are doing. Uh, I would rather take the walk at the dog's pace than at my pace. I'm getting enough uh, exercise out of a three-hour walk um, without forcing the dogs to move at my pace. Um, so they get to go at their pace when they're uh, on the leash. I'm about uh, three kilometers from uh, home right now. So it's going to take us about half an hour, 45 minutes to get there. They're going to sniff around because they don't get a chance to sniff up here uh, very often. But uh, the nose is the most important sense of a dog, so they might as well get as much stimulation out of it as they possibly can. Pardon the shaky camera. You'll note that uh, both of these dogs, particularly the lab, is right out at front, straining on the leash. I've never tried to make either of these dogs uh, heal, though they both tend to do so when they're exceptionally tired. I've come to the conclusion that uh, being out in front is not an example of dominance behavior on the part of the dog, but an example of the dog's protective instincts essentially taking point in military terms and uh, looking out for uh, everybody, particularly me. The leash and the harness is not seen as an example of uh, ownership on the parts of the dogs, or captivity on the parts of the dogs, but rather an extension of the connection between the dog and the human, uh, or me. So they see the leash as much as a form of security uh, as uh, I do. I'm keeping the dog secure by being obedient on the leash and they are secure knowing that uh, we're all together as a team looking out for each other and they're very much aware that I'm looking out for them as well. Unfortunately because of the area I live in I'm forced to utilize this uh, intersection for the dogs and I think this is probably uh, a chief example. Hang on a sec. Sit! Sit! Coco, sit! A chief example why you would want to have your dogs obey simple commands like sit and wait because with the traffic on a four intersection, let's go on a four way intersection, particularly this one where part of the road is obscured and motorists do not seem to want to obey pedestrian uh, laws, it's absolutely essential that you have control over your dogs as you're going through the uh, intersection. One of the lab's bad habits is her exuberance, which I really can't complain about because it serves her well most of the time. But even in her exuberance sitting at an intersection, she will uh, occasionally try to lunge. So I try to have them sit a couple of meters away from the actual road. So in case the lab does decide to lunge, whether it's at a squirrel, another bicycle, a motorcycle, whatever gets her going, I've got time to get her under control. And you'll note that I've got the uh, leashes under a fairly tight rein. 
This is a little bit more difficult at the beginning of the walk when they're completely full of energy. But at this uh, stage, three hours plus into the walk where we're heading back to the house for dinner and a raw cow bone, they're quite sedate and amenable to listening. Uh, so certainly I would uh, recommend consistent daily exercise uh, on a leash where you're using repetitive commands. Now you've probably noticed I talk a lot on the camera. I also talk a lot to the dogs, um, which may or may not be to them idle babbling. I think they're able to quite easily cut through the static of my incessant babbling and understand the commands. So uh, this works for me. Um, but I, I think the one of the objects of the exercise, which we'll recap uh, soon, is consistent daily exercise lasting a couple of hours. Hi folks. Today we are on the Southern Ontario Waterfront Trail, which is a pretty much paved trail from... Hi folks. Today we are on the Southern Ontario Waterfront Trail which begins at the Quebec border and essentially extends mostly paved and mostly well marked along the northern shore of Lake Ontario right to Niagara on the lake at the New York border, Niagara Falls, New York, Buffalo border. Um, today I'm uh, having the lab, Aquila, work with a uh, specifically designed dog backpack by Eureka. When we first got the backpack it uh, had design problems. It still has design problems but I've modified around them. The modifications uh, include uh, reinforcing the uh, chest portion so that it doesn't chafe on her chest using scuba diving weights at the bottom of both panniers to lower the center of gravity so it doesn't fall from side to side. And as you can see, adding two straps around her uh, rear legs so that uh, when she crouches, the bag doesn't fall off. Eventually, we're going to uh, use it uh, backpacking. Um, up the Ganaraska and or uh, Bruce Trail and uh, she'll carry her uh, food. Now a note on food, both of these dogs get glucosamine rich f uh, high grade food. The lab gets a cup and a quarter in the morning and a cup and a quarter at night. Lassipu gets half a cup in the morning and half a cup at night. The diet is supplemented with milk bone dog biscuits as rewards and uh, when I can get them uh, cow bones for them to gnaw on. Webb being six years old it's really important for her teeth to be taken care of as it is for the uh, Lassipu who's 13. Uh, so I give them an opportunity to chew hard things as much as possible. Consequently, uh, neither of these dogs have any plaque worth mentioning. And in vet uh, examinations, that's not even bother suggesting uh, a cleaning because the teeth are that clean, which is nice because vets uh, are ten tend to. Uh, over-prescribed services as a way of profit making, which should be a caution uh, for any American-style human health care, because that's exactly what would happen to us. Anyway, we'll uh, move on to uh, Lake Ontario, where I'm going to demonstrate how the dog swims with the backpack on. A little bit more information about the backpack. You'll note that the uh, top of the pack is padded. There's a handle attached to it at the front facing end. There's a D-ring and at the back uh, end there's also a D-ring with a little bell attached. The little bell is cute. I don't think it does much. Um, the handle is useful. The D-rings um, 
haven't failed yet, but I suspect that eventually, and this is where I attach the leash to when I need it, I suspect the, uh, that eventually the uh, D-rings will give as there is a, um, oh, a, a split in the metal right in the middle of the straight portion of the uh, D-ring. Uh, it certainly slows the lab down. And I worry a little bit about uh, the two back straps chafing uh, where they meet on her underside. And you can see a little bit of constriction around her labia uh, area. Um, I'll look afterwards, after we finish this walk, whether there's uh, been any chafing. Uh, this particular route that we're taking today is in my estimation, between 15 and 20 kilometers, which uh, certainly is uh, a good piece of exercise for both of these dogs, not to mention me. I think the backpack is also useful in that by providing extra weight, it also provides... Hi, folks. How you doing? Not bad. Thanks, good. yourselves. Right. It also provides some extra muscle movement for her. So again, increases the caloric burn off and uh, at her rate of speed helps with the cardiovascular fitness as well. And uh, as I learned in uh, early fitness uh, classes, uh, as goes cardiovascular fitness, so goes the other three components of fitness which, if you will remember and consult your texts, the other three components of fitness are strength, endurance, and flexibility. So, next stop, Lake Ontario. Now, today in Canada is uh, Victoria Day. Uh, today's the 23rd of May. Um, water is uh, just a few degrees above zero Celsius. So uh, you'll note that all of our parasailers, or whatever you want to call them, getting irradiated at the Victoria Station are all wearing wetsuits. Then you've got the uh, idiot uh, on a uh, sea dew who is uh, interfering with why we're here, uh, she swims quite effectively with the backpack on, although it does tend to slow her down. Resistance training is not a bad thing, either for dogs or for people. Because of the water temperature, she's good for uh, maybe three or four uh, reps in these water conditions. I'm going to have to adjust the pack because there's more water in the uh, right pannier than there is the left. I'm assuming that's water. Why that is, I don't know because I equally weighted them before we uh, left the house. Um, but because it's uh, positively buoyant, it's not going to uh, sink her. And in fact, it'll act as a de facto life jacket for her which again is not a bad thing. Not that she needs a life jacket. Drop the stick, Akila. Drop the stick, little girl. Come on, sweetheart, drop the stick. She'll do her victory lap regardless. The uh, backpack made her quite hot, so getting into the water is uh, quite a relief for her. Anyway, talk to you later. Now, you wouldn't think the Lake Ontario would generate these waves, but uh, it does. Um, in fact, these are uh, moderate waves. When it gets really windy, uh, the waves can be quite high. Aquila really, the lab, really likes uh, swimming in the waves. It's a challenge for her, and she's not frightened of them uh, at all. She's very good at keeping her nose above the water, which is, of course, how she breathes. So she's going to work herself up to uh, going to get the stick because she's hoping that the waves will wash the stick uh, in shore. Go get your stick, monster! Where's your stick? But we're not going to linger down here. It's quite to see the uh, relative uh, beauty of the uh, place. Eventually I'm going to be uh, scuba diving down here. Hopefully pretty soon, since I need to uh, test out my equipment this year, and I've still got about 1,200 pound 
lots of uh, pressure in my tank. And that's nice nitrox uh, air, got uh, 20% uh, oxygen air. This guy's having a blast. Anyway, not one of my ambitions in life to uh, do that. Uh, I'm happy being under the water, not on top of the water. I look like I'm going to sailboat in sometime. Far too much personal exposition. Uh, we'll hold it on the lab until she works up her nerves to get in the water. Get your stick, Akila! Come on, little girl, get your stick! Alright, there she goes. Real wave buster. In these conditions, you have to worry a bit about undertow as well, but uh, Akila keeps herself on the surface well enough, uh, and she's strong enough that she can avoid the undertow. Worst case scenario, if she gets into trouble, I go in. Uh, then the walk is aborted, and I try to get back to the house uh, fast enough before I get hypothermia. Anyway, talk to you later. This is one of my favorite portions of the waterfront trail. This uh, bridge that uh, spans one of the tributaries of the Rouge River. Now hang on, buddy. Leaves on the trees are just starting to uh, sprout. And uh, any of you viewing from the States will uh, note that uh, today being the 23rd of May, uh, if you're down say south of Washington DC the leaves have been on the trees for quite a while now but up here being a much more northern climb uh, things are uh, a lot slower um, getting back to the lab you'll note that uh, she's not a shirker for work carrying both the stick and the uh, backpack it's a good thing the weather actually turned out well today because this is the uh, Rouge Beach Park and it's pretty much at the uh, mouth of the uh, Rouge River uh, here, the main mouth anyway. Um, this beach is an artificial beach that's been built up over the years and it's right adjacent to the uh, CN and uh, uh, GO Transit trunk. Uh, but as you can also see, it's uh, general recreation for uh, everybody. Though I think they're uh, a long way from Hawaii. But this is very well used this time of year which is very nice to see and uh, every year there's improvements to this part. The lab is going to swim this entire uh, portion of the river in a few minutes and I'll uh, let you see it uh, once we get down there. Okay folks, this again is the north portion of the Rouge River Delta and like most silt filled shallow deltas in the summertime, at least in Canada, it turns into a marsh. Now by the middle of July, this is all going to be a sea of lily pads, but right now with it just starting, uh, I think the resolution on this camera doesn't allow you to see the lily pads starting, but there's already quite a few. Um, this is a boardwalk over the marsh where the uh, lab is uh, chewing her latest acquisition and I actually let her do this quite a bit because it's absolutely wonderful for gum stimulation, teening, cleaning her teeth. It's as good as dental floss or a toothpick. She'll have a whale of a time chewing through this. It's fairly soft wood, waterlogged, so she'll get through it in a matter of uh, minutes uh, and then we'll move on. Um, another thing about the pack you can see is that there's a reflective strip at the back. It's great for uh, nighttime movement, although I prefer to uh, put a flashing uh, bicycle light on both of these dogs when we're working at night. Anyway, next off Lake Ontario.